Nephalotabidometry is made up of two words Nephalometry and Turbidometry. Nephalometry and Turbidometry are distinct classes of instrumental techniques that rely on the phenomenon of scattering of light. Scattering of light is produced by particulate matters present in any solution. As we already studied in various spectroscopic methods, when any electromagnetic radiation is incident upon any sample, it is either absorbed, transmitted or scattered. In case of nephloturbidometry, the amount of light scattered is proportional to the concentration of insoluble particles. And this relationship forms the basis of nephloturbidometry. In this case, scattered light can be measured by either turbidometry or nephalometry. In turbidometry, the measurement of light transmitted through the medium, which is also known as scattered light, forms the basis of turbidometric analysis. These measurements are made at 180 degree angle from the incident light beam. Like in this picture, light source, sample cell and detectors are arranged parallel to each other. In nephalometry, the intensity of scattered light is measured but measurement at any specific angle is not a necessity here. It means that detector can be positioned at any angle. So now we can say that these two techniques differs only in manner of measuring the scattered radiation. Turbidity can be measured on most routine analyzers such as spectrophotometer. The intensity of scattered light is normally measured by a nephalometer. So now we will focus on light scattering phenomenon. We can understand the phenomenon of light scattering by the fact that the blue color of the sky and the red color of the sun at sunset result from scattering of light by small dust particles, water molecules and other gases present in the atmosphere. Now in this case, efficiency with which light is scattered depends on the wavelength of radiation. Theory of Turbidometry and Nephalometry Turbidity deals with measurement of intensity of transmitted light. So turbidometric measurements are made at 180 degree from the incident light beam. Nephalometry deals with measurement of intensity of scattered light. So the intensity of scattered light is measured but not necessarily at right angles to the incident light beam. Factors affecting scattering of light There are various factors which affect scattering of light. Few of them include concentration of particles, particle size, wavelength of radiation, distance of observation, and molecular weight of particles. Instrumentation Instrument used in nephalometry and turbidometry is very similar to spectrophotometer devices. In both instruments, various parts are arranged in following manner. First, radiation source, then filters, sample cell, detector, and readout device. First part of the instrument is radiation source. Radiation source is used to produce the radiation. Mercury lamp and tungsten lamp are used as a light source in both nephalometry and turbidometry. Under light pressure, the excitation of mercury atoms is done by electric discharge. Tungsten lamp contains a piece of tungsten wire which is heated in a controlled atmosphere. For detailed specification and working, check out my previous lecture, Instrumentation of Ultraviolet Visible Spectroscopy. Second part used in instrumentation include filters. Filters are used to convert the polychromatic light to monochromatic light. These are also used to select desired wavelength of radiation. 
Generally, two types of filters are used. Absorption filters and interference filters. Absorption filters are essentially glass filters that are dyed or pigmented gelatin resins. These are mostly used to filter unwanted wavelengths. They are commonly utilized to block a certain band of wavelengths and are also useful for transmitting long wavelengths and blocking shorter ones. Interference filter is an optical filter that reflects one or more spectral bands or lines and transmits others. It maintains a nearly zero coefficient for absorption of all wavelengths of interest. An interference filter may be high pass, low pass, band pass or band rejection. Third important part of the instrument includes sample cell. These cells are made up of glass or plastic. Rectangular cells are used for turbidimeter and semi-octagonal sample cells are used in nephalometer. In general, a cell with a rectangular cross section is preferred where measurements are to be made at angles other than 90 degree. Semi-octagonal cells are widely used. In this picture you can see a sample cell used in turbidimeter. Here I0 is incident radiation and IT is transmitted radiation. Sample cell used in nephalometer is semi-octagonal. These types of cells helps in the detection of transmitted radiation at various angles. Next part of the instrument is detector. Photomultiplier tube and photocell can be used as detector in both nephalometry and turbidometry. In photomultiplier tube, in order to obtain greater sensitivity to very weak light intensities, multiplication of the initial photoelectrons by second emission is employed. Several anodes at a gradually increasing potential are contained in one bulb. For detailed construction and working of photomultiplier tube, you can refer my previous lecture, Instrumentation of Ultraviolet Visible Spectrophotometer. Finally, the last part of the instrument is readout device. In readout device, the signal obtained from the detector could be displayed for readout or further feed into a data station for printout by the requested format. In this picture, you can see assembly of turbidimeter. It includes light source, filter, sample cell, detector and readout device. A turbidimeter is a portable or installation instrument to measure suspended particles in a liquid or a colloidal gas. A turbidimeter measures the suspended particles with a light beam and a light detector set at 90 degree from the original beam. Here you can see the instrumentation of nephalometer. A nephalometer contains a light source, filter, lens, sample cell, and detector. A photomultiplier tube detector is used as a receiver which is mounted on a turntable and may be positioned at any desired angles from 0 degree to 180 degree relative to the exit beam. Next is choice of method. Choice of the method depends upon the amount of light scattered by suspended particles present in solution. Turbidimetry is used for highly concentrated suspension, while nephalometry is used for low concentrated suspensions for more accurate results. Thank you.